filled with wonder and mystery. Imagine a man who could visualize complex inventions in his mind in perfect three-dimensional detail without ever needing to write down a plan or build a prototype, a man who claimed to receive flashes of inspiration, even entire technical schematics, in moments of intense blinding light. A man who spoke eight languages could recite entire books from memory and had a pathological aversion to germs, round objects, and human hair. Now imagine that this same man dreamed of a world lit by free wireless energy for everyone. He envisioned a global network for instant communication. He built machines that could generate man-made lightning and send tremors through the ground. He pioneered the electrical system that powers our modern world, yet died penniless and alone in a hotel room, his name nearly forgotten. This is not a character from science fiction, this was a real man. A man of profound contradiction, a visionary so far ahead of his time that we are still, today, catching up to his ideas. This is the story of Nikola Tesla, the eccentric genius who electrified the world and then faded into darkness. The man out of time, welcome to past in seconds. In the pantheon of great inventors, names like Thomas Edison and Alexander Graham Bell are household staples. But Nikola Tesla, the man whose work arguably made their successes possible, has only recently been reclaimed from the shadows. His life is a tapestry woven with threads of undeniable brilliance and profound peculiarity. He was a showman and a recluse, a futurist obsessed with the past, a man who gave the world the alternating current motor, yet spent his final years communing with pigeons in a New York City park. Over the next hour, we will trace the arc of this extraordinary life. We will follow him from a small village in the Austrian Empire to the pinnacle of fame in America, and then into a long, slow descent into obscurity. We will separate the man from the myth, the real science from the popular legend, and explore why, more than 75 years after his death, the name Tesla has once again become a symbol of futuristic innovation. The Lightning Seeds – Early Life and Education Nikola Tesla was born at the stroke of midnight during a fierce lightning storm on July 10, 1856, in the village of Smiljan, in what is now Croatia. He would later say the timing was an omen. He was the son of an Eastern Orthodox priest, Milutin Tesla, a man who wanted his son to follow him into the clergy, and Juka Mandic, an inventive homemaker who could craft complex mechanical appliances in her own kitchen. From his father, Tesla inherited a photographic memory and a talent for languages. From his mother, he gained his intuitive, mechanical genius. But his childhood was also marked by strange afflictions. He suffered from vivid, blinding flashes of light that would appear before his eyes, often accompanied by detailed visions of future inventions. These were not hallucinations to him, but a form of inspiration. He learned to control these visions, to use them as a mental workshop where he could build and test his devices without ever touching a tool. He was also plagued by obsessive compulsive behaviors from a young age. He developed a powerful aversion to round objects, earrings, and the touch of human hair. He would calculate the cubic volume of his food before eating, and he was obsessed with the number three, often feeling compelled to walk around a block three times before entering a building. Against his father's wishes, Tesla developed a passion for engineering. He enrolled at the Imperial Royal Technical College in Graz, Austria. It was here that his destiny began to crystallize. During a demonstration of a Gram Dynamo, a direct current machine, he noticed its flaws. The brushes sparked violently and the entire machine seemed inefficient. He suggested to his professor that a motor without a commutator, one that ran on alternating current, could be built. He was laughed out of the room, told it was an impossible fantasy, a perpetual motion machine. That moment of public humiliation lit a fire in him. 
The idea for the alternating current induction motor began to form in his mind, not on paper, but in the vibrant three-dimensional theatre of his imagination. He became obsessed. He dropped out of school, suffered a nervous breakdown, and severed ties with his family, who thought he was throwing his life away. He was adrift, a genius with a world-changing idea, and no one to listen. The Current War Tesla versus Edison. In 1884, Tesla, now 28 years old, arrived in New York City with four cents in his pocket, a book of poetry, and a letter of introduction to the most famous inventor in America, Thomas Alva Edison. Edison's empire was built on direct current, or DC. DC power is simple and flows in one direction, but it has a fatal flaw. It cannot travel long distances without significant power loss. This meant Edison had to build a power station every square mile, a massively inefficient and expensive proposition. Tesla, the brilliant young immigrant, went to work for the Wizard of Menlo Park. Edison, impressed by Tesla's skill, promised him the then astronomical sum of $50,000 if he could successfully redesign the inefficient DC generators and motors in his plants. Tesla threw himself into the work, and after months of toil he delivered. He asked for his payment. Edison laughed. Tesla, he said, you don't understand our American humor. He offered a small raise instead. Tesla, feeling betrayed and humiliated, quit on the spot. This personal betrayal ignited the War of the Currents, one of the most pivotal business and scientific rivalries in history. Tesla was now free to pursue his own vision, alternating current, or AC. While DC flows in one direction, AC constantly changes direction back and forth dozens of times a second. This allows it to be stepped up to extremely high voltages by a transformer sent over vast distances with minimal loss and then stepped down to safe levels for home and business use. While digging a ditch to make ends meet, Tesla was discovered by the industrialist George Westinghouse. Westinghouse, a rival of Edison's, immediately saw the potential in Tesla's AC patents. He licensed them for a large sum and gave Tesla a royalty on every horsepower of AC electricity sold. For the first time, Tesla was rich and respected. What followed was a brutal public relations battle. Edison, desperate to protect his DC empire, launched a vicious campaign to portray AC as lethally dangerous. He publicly electrocuted stray dogs, cats, and even an elephant named Topsy using AC power, trying to brand it as the executioner's current. He even helped pioneer the first electric chair using AC, hoping to associate Tesla's system with death. But Tesla fought back with spectacular demonstrations of his own. At the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, the White City, he and Westinghouse won the contract to power the entire fair. Tesla put on a breathtaking show. He passed high-frequency AC through his own body to make light bulbs glow, proving its safety when properly used. The fair was a dazzling success, a beacon of a new, electrified future, and it was powered by Tesla's AC. The final blow came when Westinghouse and Tesla won the contract to harness the power of Niagara Falls, building the world's first large-scale AC power plant, proving once and for all that alternating current was the technology of the future. Tesla had won. The entire world would come to be powered by his system. He was at the absolute peak of his fame and fortune. The Wizard's Lab. Peak inventions and wireless dreams. Flush with success and royalty money, Tesla established his own laboratory in New York. This was his creative playground, a place where his most fantastical ideas would take shape. It was here that his reputation as a wizard was born. He invented the Tesla coil, a resonant transformer circuit capable of producing incredibly high voltage, low current, high frequency electricity. It could create massive snaking arcs of man-made lightning, send electrical currents through the air to light lamps wirelessly, 
and produce strange, ethical glows. It was both a serious scientific instrument for studying high-frequency phenomena and a tool of pure theatrical spectacle. But his mind was already racing ahead, far beyond mere lighting and motors. He became obsessed with the concept of wireless communication and energy. He envisioned a world wireless system, a global network of giant towers that would transmit not only information, telegrams, telephone calls, even faxes, but also electrical power itself, for free, to every person on the planet. To prove this was possible, he built a massive laboratory in Colorado Springs in 1899. Here, he constructed a colossal Tesla coil, 52 feet in diameter, topped by a 142-foot metal mast. He called it his magnifying transmitter. When he threw the switch, he generated artificial lightning bolts over 100 feet long. The thunder from the discharges could be heard 15 miles away. The sheer energy drain caused power blackouts throughout Colorado Springs. He claimed he received signals from another planet. He was conducting experiments that seemed to border on magic. Encouraged, he secured funding from the financier J.P. Morgan to build an even larger facility on Long Island, Wardenclyffe Tower. It was to be the first of his worldwide transmission stations. A 187-foot wooden tower rose above a complex of laboratories with a shaft plunging 120 feet into the ground. Tesla's plan was to use the entire Earth itself as a conductor, pumping electrical energy into the planet's crust at its resonant frequency to power devices anywhere on the globe. But the project was a disaster. It was monstrously expensive. Morgan, who had invested in the hope of a profitable wireless telegraphy system, grew impatient with Tesla's dream of free energy for all. If anyone can draw on the power, where do we put the meter? Morgan reportedly asked. He withdrew his funding. Wardenclyffe Tower stood as a haunting, half-finished monument to a shattered dream. It was Tesla's greatest ambition and his most catastrophic failure. The burden of debt began to crush him. His reputation, once so bright, began to tarnish. The fading light, eccentricities and obscurity. The collapse of Wardenclyffe marked a turning point. As his finances dwindled, Tesla's eccentricities intensified, isolating him from the scientific and business communities. He moved from one hotel to another, leaving behind unpaid bills. He developed an elaborate set of rituals and phobias. He was fanatical about cleanliness, demanding a stack of 18 clean linen napkins at every meal and polishing every piece of cutlery with 18 napkins himself. He was compelled to calculate the cubic volume of his food. He could not bear to touch hair or wear anything containing pearls. He was obsessed with pigeons, especially a specific white female pigeon whom he claimed to love as one loves a human being. He would spend hours feeding and caring for them in his hotel room and in the park. His ideas grew more speculative, less grounded in commercial reality. He talked of a death ray, a particle beam weapon he called the Teleforce, which he hoped would end all war by making defense impregnable. He described plans for thought photography and a camera that could capture images from the retina of a dead person. To the press, he was a fascinating oddity. To investors, he was now a liability. He spent his final decades in a small suite at the Hotel New Yorker, room 3327. He was a lonely, aging man, still brimming with ideas, but with no means to build them. On January 7th, 1943, he was found dead in his room by a maid. He was 86 years old. The scale of his contribution was so poorly understood that the FBI, fearing his death ray plans might fall into enemy hands during World War II, had his property seized and declared it top secret. The man who had given the world its modern electrical system died alone, his papers confiscated by the government, his name a fading memory. The Genius Rediscovered For decades after his death, Nikola Tesla was a footnote in history, overshadowed by his rivals. 
but in the late 20th and early 21st centuries, a remarkable rediscovery began, as our world became wireless, as we built a global network for instant communication, as we began to dream of transmitting power without cords, people looked back and saw a profit. Tesla hadn't just invented things. He had envisioned the very fabric of our modern technological reality. The AC motor and power system remain his towering, world-changing legacy. But his predictions were uncanny. He foresaw Wi-Fi, smartphones, and GPS. He dreamed of renewable energy harnessed from the sun and the earth. His work on rotating magnetic fields, robotics, and remote control laid the groundwork for countless modern technologies. Today, his name is everywhere. It's on the most advanced electric cars on the planet. It's in the unit of magnetic flux density, the Tesla. He is a hero to inventors, engineers, and free thinkers. The story of Nikola Tesla is a cautionary tale about the tension between pure genius and practical commerce, between visionary dreams and the harsh realities of funding and fame. He was a man out of time, a mind too powerful and too peculiar for his own era. He saw the future with blinding clarity, but he could never quite navigate the present. He was, in the end, the ultimate eccentric genius a man who truly held lightning in his mind and who, for a brief, brilliant moment, let the whole world see its glow.